how good is gaming streaming on the RTX 3080? And how can streaming affect your FPS versus non-streaming? Today, we're gonna to be diving into that. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your stream technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into PC tech, hardware, gaming, streaming tips, tutorials, news and reviews, you're in the right place. Click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. And also, I stream to Twitch every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So feel free to drop by while we're live, drop a follow, let's talk some tech. Anyways, let's get to the rest of the video. Gaming and streaming on the RTX 3080. Sure, some other people have covered that, including Apos Vox, so make sure you check out his video. That'll be linked down in the description below. Um, there's a lot when it comes to gaming and streaming. A big thing with gaming and streaming on the same computer, single PC setup, is that CPU encoding can be a lot harder on the system in terms of FPS loss in games. And GPU encoding, especially with any GPU Turing 1650 Super and up, including the RTX 3000 series cards, has a fantastic GPU encoder. Well, today I'm gonna to be comparing the encoder, I guess the performance in the games of GPU encoding versus CPU encoding versus non-streaming, just raw gaming performance by itself without having to stream. So uh, we're gonna be looking at Call of Duty Modern Warfare doing some Warzone matches and also PUBG, of course, doing PUBG matches, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's fire it up. Park. Now, right now, we are in CPU encoding mode. I have a Ryzen 9 3900X, so I can do CPU encoding. It's not medium with some additional optimizations that will be detailed in the description below that help the visual performance a little bit better, to be a little bit better. But uh, yeah, let's launch the game and check it out. Everything is on high or normal, which is what I typically like to game at for maximum FPS. Uh, so we're gonna go with that. So let's queue up for BR solo and let's see how the frames per second performance is while streaming. Okay, so right now here we are in the, uh, the pre-staging area for BR solos. And uh, I have a big view of the map here, it could be, which could be pretty intensive, and I'm getting around 100 FPS, which is kind of surprising. However, it's perfectly smooth and playable still, so all good so far, in my opinion. Oh, driving a vehicle, which could be a little more of a rough, rough experience, and yeah, it indeed is. We're down into the 90s in the FPS here, but again, it's still perfectly smooth and playable, in my opinion. Okay, so let's head into the city, see how the FPS might differ there. So I'm still hanging out in the 90s. I seem to get down into the 80s now. Really interesting, but I mean, I'm still having fun enjoying playing at these frame rates. All good. So we're inside a building right now, so we should be getting better FPS. We're st still hanging around 100, 90 to 100 right now. Uh, let's move on out of here. Call of Duty Warzone can be kind of weird with, like, streaming performance, I guess you could put it. On lower-end systems, like I did with the $250 gaming and streaming PC build, it did surprisingly well. But the, here I am on a much higher-end system and GPU, and it's, it's while still doing well, it's not doing, like, an insane amount better like I would have expected. Okay, so here we are with a big view of the city around and uh, we're still looking at around 90 fps i hear some uh, some battling over there let's try this oh that hurt him you're being tracked by an enemy team if aid and survive now i am being tracked okay didn't hear anybody really run around oh of course damn it <laughs> So that's streaming Call of Duty Warzone. That was a single player BR match. And we were averaging as low as around 90 FPS. Seeing it as low as 90 FPS, but getting up to 120 plus FPS depending on the situation. Where, well, let's check it out how that's gonna go while we're not streaming and see what the difference could be. Okay, we're back here and we are, oh, and I'm getting shot at. We are not streaming anymore. 
while still playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. We're in the staging area, Warzone, Battle Royale, Solos. We're already seeing higher FPS than I saw while streaming. It's kind of expected, but yeah. Anyways, let's, uh, let's play through a match and observe the FPS. Okay, dropping in from the plane, we're seeing 160 FPS already, and it's going up. Uh, I saw it hit 180. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's fly in. It certainly does feel a little smoother when I'm not streaming, but, uh, you know, that's just the name of the game. All right, similar to what I did in the previous part. Let's get in the vehicle and see how the FPS is. Driving around, like I've mentioned, is certainly more resource heavy. What is this guy doing? Well, hello there. What the heck is going? That was weird. I got stuck on the rocks, tripped out. I still got him though. And the vehicle blew up and killed me. <laughs> all right, I'm up. Let's see how this goes. All right, all right. Boom. Boom. Bye-bye. 120 FPS right now looking up at the sky, but it is maintaining now 140, so it's definitely maintaining a higher FPS than not streaming. But again, kind of expected. And we are back. Now we're going to be on the tr the NVENC of the 3080, which is the, the NVENC generation introduced off of the uh, the Turing GPUs. Massive improvement over previous gen NVENC. Uh, should look good. So let's go ahead and fire up Call of Duty one more time. Okay, That's back in the out. plane, getting 140 plus FPS right now. Let's drop so. down and see what we can get. I got somebody down in here. I'm at 120-ish FPS. It is doing better than the CPU encoding that I was doing, so hey, that's something. But we always knew that uh, using hardware encoding to offload the load from CPU, this is the, the reason that you do that. How did that happen? Come on, I had to drop on that person. That's messed up. Got him. Okay, so that's this game. It definitely is averaging higher FPS than uh, CPU-based streaming. So, the power of hardware encoding, or NVENC in this case. Let's switch to PUBG and see how that goes. So here we are in PUBG now. Um, we have the lobby limited to 60 FPS. We'll see the real FPS once we get into a match. First, let's check our settings. Settings. Uh, NVIDIA highlights, we're going to turn that off. Make sure we get the most performance we can. We're at 1080p. Uh, let's see overall graphics is a mix of high and medium, but let's just put everything to high Let's see uh, overall. Let's see high and then I'm gonna optimize the way I normally do for games like this Foliage to very low view distance. I'll leave that alone and honestly, that's pretty much it I'm gonna turn VSync off make sure we get the most FPS that we can and uh, There we go. So let's apply that high preset very low foliage and no v-sync all right we've loaded into one of the kind of newer maps i guess sandhawk sort of smaller map uh we're running around here i'm seeing wow uh, 180 plus fps i just hit 200 fps <laughs> big old hiccup right now as the uh, other things loaded in but uh but yeah so far getting tons of fps in this game so this goes to show you modern warfare is a little funny when it comes to streaming if you want to get max performance you're probably going to have to use a capture card in a second pc in order to get the most out of modern warfare warfare if you want maximum fps at all times playing it however if you're good with just uh i don't know uh, just really good fps <laughs> that's then you're fine it doesn't matter but uh the, but we still have to compare it to performance differences with between CPU encoding and NVENC. So uh, I'm sure you, at, by this point, I've already talked about that in Modern Warfare. We're on the PUBG now and PUBG so far, at least CPU encoding as well is doing fantastic. We already touched 200 FPS. So let's see what happens when we're actually in the plane and drop it shortly. We're in the plane seeing all this map getting way over 200 FPS. This is sick. Let's drop down and see how it uh, ends up stabilizing. All right, 
we've hit the ground seeing around 100 fps and it's starting to go up now that uh now that it stabilizes a little bit 132 131 138 let's keep running around and seeing how that changes just past 150 fps i even saw it touch 160 fps nice Running out in the open right now, I'm seeing over 130 FPS, over 140 FPS, just touched 150 FPS. Fantastic. That means that uh, 1080p, especially if you start lowering settings, you could lock 144 FPS while streaming here. Ooh, the loot truck is here. Hello, loot truck. Drop me some loot. No? Okay, fine. Alright, so we're driving now, we're riding a motorcycle. FPS again, you know, from, I don't know for some reason BRs Riding motorcycle like this is a lot more intensive, but we're down to 100 ish FPS 120 Sort of stabilized out I'm running I'm going into the circle, so it's still gonna be fine Woo No, 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 no <laughs> I got myself killed but you guys got to see the FPS performance, so that's all that mattered. All right, here we are, OG map, which should give similar performance to the other map that we are on in the other test. We are, all, we are already way over 200 FPS. I just saw it almost even hit 300 FPS. It dropped down to the 170s for a second here, but it's going up. I got trees in front of me, 291, two, there it is, 300 FPS. Are you kidding me? This thing is sick. Let's look at people again. Yeah, if I look at all this, it goes down. If I look at trees and shrubberies, it goes way up. <laughs> Back to people, way down. Now we're in the plane. We're already up to almost 200 FPS, but let's see what happens once we actually drop and get going. Ooh, Saverni, my favorite. And we've hit the ground. We're already seeing 140 plus FPS. 192, 194, 200. But uh, let's see how we can actually make things work here. Need a real gun? Yeah, I'll take that gun instead. Out in the open now. Bunch of structures around me. 184, 164. 153, 155, 131, 142. So, yeah, doing fantastic. Especially in comparison. There's a the dude. Boom, baby. <laughs> so, while driving around, I saw as low as 120, but now we're up to 200 again while driving. So, uh, that's nice. Let's do this adrenaline. Oh, come on. Messed up. I had him. I needed more health, though, I guess. I ended up at around 150-ish FPS here. And yeah, all right. This is PUBG non-streaming. So here we are back in PUBG under NVENC. And if I look in the same area where I was crossing 300 FPS earlier, I'm getting around 250 to 260 so yeah definitely again the advantages of GPU encoding for streaming that's for sure if, if I'm not demonstrating how well this runs while gaming and streaming I'm definitely demonstrating a reason to use GPU encoding over CPU encoding so long as it's the really nice Turing NVENC although you know uh, exceptions can be made for the older generation NVENC depending on your configuration all right, we're in PUBG here, back in the plane. Let's uh, let's drop down, see how the FPS goes. We're already getting some pretty good FPS here, already above 150, but uh, let's just drop down and get the show on the road. So I did notice that the GPU is running hotter, which dropped the GPU clock just a little bit, which is honestly not that big a deal. Probably can't even notice it in frames. I'm sitting here inside this house 
Uh, at one point I was over 200 FPS, but I'm way over 144, which I believe is an improvement over what I was at while I was streaming off the CPU. 81C, 82C, yeah, it's, uh, this 38, it can be a toasty boy. I think the extra work that the GPU encoder is doing that's adding to the heat output of the GPU and thus driving the, uh, the, the frequencies down one bin on the GPU boost. Running around here out in the open, I'm seeing 180, 190 FPS. This is awesome. Oh, okay. I hear gunfire. Let's run towards it and see what happens. Bye-bye. All right, we're driving around, seeing over 140 FPS still, so that's nice. Saw a little drop to 120-ish, but then almost 200, and oh boy. Ugh. <laughs> all right closing thoughts let's go okay that does it that ends the demonstration of gaming and streaming on the rtx 3080 cpu and nvenc and not streaming of course and i gotta say i got the lowest frames per second with my ryzen 9 3900x doing the cpu encoding Although it was still perfectly adequate, definitely playable, and I've been doing it that way for over a year now, and it's everything has been perfectly enjoyable during the streams still. So uh, I, I definitely do enjoy CPU encoding, but I was told by viewers that it was a tiny difference better. And I have a really well-optimized CPU encoding setup, and that GPU encoding with max quality. And I have a video of the way that I've set up my GPU encoding linked right up here, by the way, and down in the description. Uh, but basically that was 5,500 kilobit per second bit rate, keyframe interval two, max B frames two, max quality preset with this encoder on the RTX 3080, which is the same as the RTX 2000 series cards and anything from the 1650 super and up. Fantastic encoder. I got better FPS in the games and apparently it looked almost very nearly as good as x264 medium so i may end up sticking to gpu encoding once again because it's been a while since i've done gpu encoding and this may sway me to come back to it even though i have a 12 core 24 thread cpu that should be able to handle everything great without as much as an f as much of an SP fps impact in the games but hey Proof is in the pudding, and there it was. Right for you guys to see, right for me to see. There you go. If you guys like this video, click that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, follow on our Insta Instagram. Yes, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff. And our Twitch. I stream to Twitch every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific, so make sure you head on over there. Twitch.tv slash Coalition Gaming Crew. And drop us a follow. Let's talk some tech. And yeah, all the links will be down in the description below. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Also, we got plenty of videos right over here. Check out our related videos, including the full review to the RTX 3080. Don't want to miss any of that stuff. Yeah? Click one yet? You should click one. Click one! Okay, bye. <laughs>